You're listening to an Englishman in the Balkans. Welcome to another episode of an Englishman in the Balkans podcast with me, David Bailey, where I share stories and experiences of life in Bosnia and Herzegovina and the wider Balkans. Today's episode is all about one of Bosnia's most iconic traditions, the art of making rakia. If you've ever wondered what goes into creating this beloved spirit, sit back, grab a glass of something strong, or maybe not, and let me take you on a journey through one of our recent rakia-making adventures. Last Wednesday, Tamara and I took a short trip, just a 15-minute drive from where we live, through some absolutely breathtaking countryside to visit her cousin's weekend house in the village of Slatina. It was a quick visit, just about an hour, but it gave me a perfect opportunity to document something I do every year, and that is the traditional process of distilling rakia. This time, they were distilling pear rakia from the fruit grown right there in the orchard. Now, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, this process is called baking rakia. It might sound strange, but that's the literal translation. Her cousin has a beautiful orchard full of pear and apple trees, and during this baking period, they were looking to distill around 90 litres of pear rakia and about 10 litres of apple rakia. <laughs> of course, I couldn't resist bringing along my drone and a couple of cameras to capture the magic of the moment. The video is on my YouTube channel called Coffee and Rakia. Please do check it out. You see, distilling rakia is a skill passed down through generations. And every year I make a point to document it. And sometimes maybe twice a year, if I'm lucky. It's not just about the drink. It's about preserving the culture, the tradition and the connection to the land. We arrived about 10.30 in the morning. The process was already well underway. The still was up and running, fueled by a real roaring wood fire. And there's always this deep, earthy smell in the air. You know, the mixture of wood smoke and the fruit mash bubbling away. The still itself is a large copper pot where the fermented fruit mash uh, is boiled. That copper pot, by the way, is called a kazani. You can hear the bubbling and every so often it gets agitated to ensure everything cooks evenly. And Tam's cousin, uh, instead of sitting there just turning that handle uh, around and around, had cleverly connected it to a battery and everything was working in a semi-automated fashion. It's a fascinating process, however. You watch the vapour rise, condense, and finally this crystal clear liquid begins to flow. The rakia. But this isn't just any alcohol. The first distilling comes out at around 50% alcohol and every step of the way is carefully monitored. It's critical to get it just right, because rakia, if improperly distilled, can be, how can I say, a bit dangerous. So they were paying close attention, constantly measuring this alcohol level and the specific gravity throughout the day. It is an art form, it really is, and one that requires focus and patience. By the time we got there, the team had already been working since about, I think, six in the morning, and they had a long day ahead. They were only distilling a small batch that day, but when it's a larger harvest, like here, when Tamara's family and the neighbours come together, it's a three or even a four-day process where everyone contributes their fruit, and the rakia still, usually mounted on a trailer, is hired and brought to the property, either by tractor or car. The man that owns that trailer, that still, we call him the Rakia Man. And he doesn't get paid in cash. Instead, he takes 10% of the Rakia produced as his fee, which I think is a pretty fair trade, for the use of his equipment. It's a communal experience. Neighbours coming together, sharing stories, and working through the long hours of distillation. Of course, none of this is complete without food. And when we turned up, there was a lovely spread of cheese, cold cuts, freshly baked sienitsa, which is a traditional Bosnian cheese pie. There were soft drinks available, but let's be honest, most people were sipping on rakia, even at that early hour of the day. It's just part of the rhythm of things. Now, here's an interesting thing about rakia. 
When you make it this year, you don't drink it this year. It has to be aged, sometimes for years, to truly come into its flavour. And a good example of this is Tamara's father is currently drinking rakia that was made back in 2013. That's 11 years old, and it's as smooth as anything you could imagine. It's plum rakia, or Schlievowitze, which is the most common type we make around here. Sometimes we do distill apple rakia as well, but plum is always the star of the show. It's moments like these that remind me how deeply rakia is woven into the fabric of life in Bosnia. It's not just about making a drink, it's about the land, the people, and the shared experiences. From the moment the fruit is harvested, to when the still is fired up, rakia making is a tradition that brings people together. Now, whether it's a small gathering like the one we visited, or a multi-day event with neighbours, the spirit of rakia is more than just a product. It's about family, friendship, and the pride of creating something by hand. So a quick, brief look at our visit to Slatina, where we witnessed the ancient craft of rakia making in full swing. I hope this episode gave you a taste, and that pun is intended, of what goes into every bottle of rakia. To find out more information about making rakia, there's a detailed blog post on my blog at anenglishmaninthebalkans.com. Please do subscribe, you can do it for free, and there's so many bits of information, videos and audio clips about my life here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, my home that I've had for over 22 years. Thanks for listening, and if you enjoyed this episode, please do subscribe, follow, share, and if it's on Spotify or Apple, where you listen to this, please leave a review. It means so much. Until next time then, from me, in the village of Chedarcini in northwest Bosnia, Zhivali Vidamusa Opet, which means cheers, and I'll see you again soon.